All right, hello, wine-drinking people. We are back. It's Friday, April 8th, and uh, getting ready for another great week of events. Next week, we got our Alex Gamble tasting tonight, so I'll tell you, you know what I'm going to be talking about and what I drank yesterday, some Gamble wines. And today, we got just one supplier to talk about, man, really short night. And I mean, I had an Alex Gamble wine last night, getting ready for the tasting just to get myself in the right mindset. I had a little 2006 Chambeau Moussini. Fabulous. One of my favorite village wines. The ultimate in elegance and finesse, Chambeau Moussini. Even though light in color and can be somewhat light in flavor, um, they don't have, they're not light in terms of complexity. A lot of nuance to Chambeau Moussini. But anyways, what are we talking about? What I drank yesterday. Just one supplier in the store yesterday, and that was our uh, friend Matthew from Noble Wines. This is the company that Jess Jacks has found, Jackson founded, and Jess, unfortunately, in failing health. And uh, the company... I think it's going to be uh, run by uh, Don Hartford, I believe. Or, I don't know if Don was right. They just bought Hartford Court Winery back. I don't know what's going to be going on. I've got to brush up on what's going on with the Jackson family estates and with the, its founder, uh, apparently in, in bad health at this point. But, hey, he's like in his 80s. But uh, has amassed some of the greatest vineyards throughout California. Jess Jackson, a legend in California. With his Kendall Jackson label, bringing that to become almost a household name for people in getting into wine. And uh, today he's got a number of great estate vineyards. They're making small production wines like Verite, La Coya, Cardinal, some of the greatest red wines being made in California. And hey, some of the greatest white wines being made in California, the Gower Ranch he owns, which is uh, uh, Helen Turley makes a Marcus and Chardonnay from there. But uh, some great Sauvignon Blancs under this new Ferrier label, but which wines did I have to drink yesterday? All right, well, we started out with a little Stone Street Chardonnay, Alexander Mountain. This is a winery that, you know, became very well known for $20 reds. And, you know, Jess decided to change the program. We're going to do all single vineyard wines. We're going to make these the elite wines in the portfolio next to La Coya and Cardinal and Verite. And we're no longer going to make these $20 wines that everyone's come to know and love. Okay, bad decision. But still have some very good wines under the Stone Street label. I think people have kind of forgotten about Stone Street. It's kind of lost a little bit of focus in this portfolio. And then because of the price point changes and the label changes, like I said, people are a little confused about what's going on at Stone Street. But still, some very good wines. This Alexander Mountain Chardonnay, one of the best wines I've had in this price point all year. A brilliant bouquet of minerals, lemon drop candy, hints of creme brulee, vanilla bean spice, very refined, lots of minerality and intensity showing on the nose here. Very concentrated and rich on the tongue as well with layers of lemon and apple fruit. Excellent freshness and wonderful underlying acidity. And again, that minerality really showing through on the finish. A very complex wine for 25 bucks. Wow. Well, there's still some really good value wines in Stone Street. All right. San Giorgio Bernal de Montalcino, Uglaforte. And this is... Uh, well, a well-known bandit of Montalcino. I always like to know what the names mean. You know, people bring me a wine. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, oh, we don't know. It's just what they call the wine. There's a meaning behind that, damn it. They didn't just call the wine that for nothing. So, Uglioforte, luckily, they put it right on the back label. <laughs> it is, so we just turned the bottle around and figured out that this was a known bandit, Montalcino, in the 12th century, the leader of the oppressors of uh, Siena. So, uh, kind of an interesting story, anyways, you know, so they did call it that for a reason. All right, a good amount of black spices, tar, truffle nuance uh, to the black cherry and wild strawberry fruit. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, complexity and intensity on the nose here, really nice. But that's no secret, the 2004 vintage, a great vintage for Montalcino. A big, but at the same time, elegant wine with lots of ele everything, fresh and zesty on the finish, some dried floral and earth nuance as well. A really nice bottle of Brunello, man. Well, like I said, 2004 is a great vintage. All right, next up, the Ferrier. This is one of the newer wines from uh, the Jackson portfolio, the Press House Red, which uh, this is 2007, a very good vintage for Sonoma and Napa. A blend of 60% Cabernet Franc, 22% Cab, 11% Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec, blah, blah, blah. Lots of very ripe blackberry and blueberry fruit, black pepper spice, fresh floral violet notes, fresh plowed black earth, a big and chewy wine with fine tannins and juicy blackberry fruit uh, showing nice balance uh, and through the finish. Excellent bottle of Cabernet blend at $30. Next up, the Stone Street Legacy. This is a wine that needs time, man. This is a wine that really is a big wine on release. Just needs a little bit of these... Uh, uh, a bottle aged to smooth out these tannins, fresh plowed black earth, black currants, cassis, spiced tobacco, bitter chocolate, espresso-like nuance to the nose, very complex, 
big and chewy on the tongue. Uh, you would never guess this is 2005. You might guess it is even younger. But layers of that toasty oak and earth and spice and cocoa showing up on the finish as well as some dry tannin. Still could use a little bit of time, this 05 Legacy. All right, the Stone Street Cabernet Alexander Mountain Estate up next. And this one a little bigger, a little fruitier on the palate. Not quite as big as the Legacy, though. I don't know why we didn't show that Legacy last. But a um, little bit of sweet tobacco, uh, spice, big and chewy on the tongue, uh, but fine tannins and a nice hand of spice, that cigar box showing on the finish, a really nice bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. Kudos to Mr. Jackson. Some very good stuff here. Um, that's what I had to drink yesterday, folks. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.